Welcome to lesson one. What is natural sleep? The first thing I want you to know as we set off on this journey is what this course is not about. This course is not about tools and techniques to layer into your already busy life. This course is about unlearning, not learning in many ways. Of course, you are going to learn some things as we go through the course. But more than that, you're going to learn to surrender and let go of the things that are in the way of you sleeping. This course is really about resetting your natural state, which is an ability to sleep. You can sleep naturally. That is your natural state. And this course aligns really well with the rest of my philosophy for life, really. And that is that everything that is not working in our lives as human beings right now is because we've forgotten nature. We've moved away from nature and away from natural ways of living life. And that is causing a lot of upset in the world right now. So... The first thing we're going to do really is explore what is natural and what is normal and really see the difference between those two things. What is natural for us as humans is not what is normal in the world right now in so many aspects of life. I feel like I could probably do a whole series of courses about that, about how much of What we see in life, and we just go, well, that's normal, that's what happens, just isn't what nature intended for us. And underpinning this, there's just a remembering that our, both our biological, you know, our physiological system and our psychological system hasn't really progressed massively in terms of how it works since we were in a cave. And yet the life we live right now, could not be further from living in a cave in nature, could it? So, the other thing about this course really is a realisation that it is the mind that gets in the way of sleep. It's only the mind, really, most of the time. And that during this course, I hope you're going to get a sense of safety, a sense of a message to your mind that it is safe to sleep, that it's not dangerous. So I'm going to start now by just telling you a little bit about my own sleep story, which I will continue in a future lesson, but just the start of it for now. So for a long time, I would have called sleep my Achilles heel. No matter what was going on in my life, if there was something that was going to show up when life was difficult or stressful or there were things, lots of things going on, it would be my sleep. It was my Achilles heel. It was the thing that would go first. If I was unwell, it would go first. If I was stressed, etc. And I kind of managed that okay uh, through life up until a certain point, and and that point was as I cruised, unfortunately, towards burnout. And in the run-up to burnout, I developed really quite severe sleep anxiety. So I would wake up, I'd go to sleep perfectly fine at night. Um, I was a primary school head teacher at that time, so I had quite a lot on in my working life, but I had a very busy personal life as well. I was what you might call a control freak. I was busy, busy, busy trying to make the world out there okay so that I could be okay inside. 
And the sleep anxiety got to the point where it pretty much popped into my head. I don't know, at least once or twice an hour, you know, it was it was like a nagging little niggly thought in the back of my mind all the time. How, how will I sleep tonight? Will I sleep tonight? So I'd fall asleep fine, but I'd sleep for a very short period of time and then I would be awake for big chunks of the night. Often doing that awful thing where you feel like you just fall asleep and then the alarm goes off. Now I didn't do some very deep analysis of that at the time, but I reckon I was sleeping three to five hours a night. And I got very involved in trying to fix that. So I read every book going. I took lots of different tablets, mostly natural things, um, and became very, very busy with that. So perhaps I'm going to pause my story now and ask you whether you can relate to that. How is your sleep right now? I would love you to comment on that. Let's get a sense in the classroom of how people's sleep is right now. I'm really interested to know. I think it's a huge issue in society right now, but I want to hear from you and what's going on with you and your sleep. So I'd love to, I'd love you to share that with me. So. We're going to learn more about my story later on, kind of how it resolved itself. I, I'm going to share with you right now that eventually I did burn out, left my job and never went back. Um, did a very dramatic walk out of my work. I never actually went back to it. But there's been an ongoing journey with sleep since then, which is a, in a much, much better place now. But more about that in a future lesson. So let's get back to this whole idea about what's natural and what's normal. So I I had this idea, just probably like you do, that seven to nine hours sleep was the thing. That's what we're aiming for. That's what we've got to try and get as an adult in the Western world. Now, I only recently became aware that that is just made up. So back in the day when people moved from the land where they probably lived more um, in tune with nature and slept more in the winter and less in the summer and that kind of thing and maybe napped more and things like that we you know we moved in from the countryside into the cities when the industrial revolution happened and in Jerome Seagull's research he talks about the predominance of sleep time during the night likely reflects influences of the modern world. In other words, if you want people to turn up and work in a factory during the day, then you need them to sleep at night. And so over time, we've just gradually got the idea that that's what's supposed to happen. That we are supposed to sleep at night for one block of time and then get up and do a day's work. But what I'm pointing to here, I hope, is helping you to loosen a little bit of this idea of what's the right way to sleep. Because I think when we go back to subtraction, which is what we're looking at here, if we are thinking this is wrong, I'm doing this wrong, I'm sleeping wrong, I'm awake at 3 a.m., this is not okay, then of course that adds a lot more noise into our already busy minds creates those awful anxious feelings and prevents us from sleeping. So I hope just these few little facts can start to help you to go, oh, if I'm awake at 3am, it's okay. Now here's an ironic little bit of this story. This course that you're listening to, I wrote it at three o'clock in the morning. And I'm actually smiling to myself here because it's not so long ago that I would have been appalled by doing anything at three o'clock in the morning. But these days, I just go with it. I sit up, put my little book torch on, do a bit of writing on my Remarkable, and then go back to sleep when I've written it. And you know what? The ease around that is so poignant, really, compared to before when being awake at three o'clock in the morning was seen by me as absolute hell. 
So again, it's looking at what's natural against what has become normal in our world. I was doing a live on Insight Timer a little while ago. And we got onto this topic and somebody said, you know, probably we would have got up to kill a pig in the night or protect the tribe. We probably wouldn't have slept for seven to nine hours. That probably would have been dangerous, really. And Roger Eckert says, um, talks about segmented sleep and he says historical evidence and recent research suggests that our ancestors naturally fell into two distinct sleep phases per night. That was a bit of a tongue twister, you may have noticed. So this is all about loosening up what's right, because as soon as we do that, there is somehow some space to allow and surrender to what is arising, which might be being awake. So for me, that's interesting because I sleep next to somebody in bed every night, my fiancé Bruce, who sleeps like an actual log. He very rarely wakes in the night and if he does, he goes to the loo in his sleep and gets back into bed and is snoring again. Now what I used to do was lie there, listening to him snoring and thinking there's something wrong with me. Check him out, he can sleep all the time and I can't. But there's lots of studies, um, one by the National Sleep Foundation that says women and men have different biological rhythms and hormonal fluctuations that influence their sleep. So it is not out of the ordinary for you to be awake when your partner isn't, no matter which gender you are. So there's something here about instead of comparing and having something else on your mind, which is, I don't sleep as well as my partner, to just start tuning in better to your own body's needs. And and we're going to explore this a little bit more in lesson three, where we're really going to look at listening to our bodies and what our bodies might be telling us when we're not sleeping. So the underlying essence of this lesson is that it is harder to sleep, harder to surrender to sleep when we think there is something wrong. Thinking there is something wrong wakes us up, has us awake and full of fear. And then it's much harder to get back to sleep. If we are shoulder shrugging and kind of okay with what's arising in the now, without the story of what's wrong and how we should be sleeping now, and we somebody else is sleeping next to us, or this isn't normal, and we're supposed to sleep seven to nine hours. Without all of that, both presence and sleep emerge naturally and easily. So what do you need to subtract so you can get more back to that natural state, back to that sleeping naturally? What ideas do you need to let go of? And we're going to explore subtraction a little bit more in lesson four. So watch out for that. So perhaps you'd like to explore this more, like what other societal ideas about sleep are completely normal right now, but not in fact natural. I'd love to hear if you actually know a little bit more about this, because I've really only, I think, probably scraped the surface of it. So what have you heard about sleep and our what's natural against what's normal. And as I already said, I'd love to hear what what is your current sleep situation. I guess if you're listening to this course, there's something going on. And let me know if this information surprises you as much as it did me to start with. Let's um, let's share those insights together and, and learn together about what, what we're seeing around this subject. If you know something that you think could help somebody else in this course, absolutely pop that in the course classroom so we can all learn together. So thank you so much for being with me during this part of the course, lesson one. Um, We're going to explore the role of the mind in sleep in lesson two. Thank you so much. Take care and lots of love.